Welcome to a video about how to repair the Mitsubishi WD65C9 television. These televisions are about 10 years old now. Many of them are starting to hit the dumpster. And if you have need of one for a back garage or man cave, they're actually not that bad to repair. I'm going to walk you through the repairs I did on mine. Hopefully there'll be a, a few interlap overlaps with what you've got on, wrong with your television. This television is set up such that when you plug it in, there is a light down here that will flash to indicate what's going wrong with the television, the one on the left there. When you power it on, if everything goes right, it will blink green back and forth, back and forth, and then power on. I believe it's uh, all blinking orange if the light is out. I'd have to double check that. Ours originally showed light out, and we replaced the lamp with a $22 lamp, which is not bad. 22 bucks for a television of this size. But after running for a few days, it failed again. The new thing that it did was this light would blink, blink red. Now, the Mitsubishi te televisions are supposed to blink a code, which you can find video of online, showing the code being X blinks of yellow, X blinks of red, meaning like say two red and two uh, yellow would be 22 error code 22 ours did not do that it only blinked steady red a further video showed that this particular model of television has to be kick-started into that dual color mode you have to push channel i believe it was up and function at the same time and hold them down for about five seconds I might have that wrong. It might have been channeled down in function, but it's one of these two combinations here. That will kick this into the color code mode that it is supposed to do from the default. Once I did that, it showed me error code number 37. Now, error code 37 on this TV means that one of the fans is dead. So taking it apart was not all that bad. All the screws on this are the same size, so it's fairly easy to get them out. Once you've gotten the screws out, there are a handful, I believe three or four, that hold this cartridge assembly inside. It'll look something like this when it's originally in there. These screws are under here, and I believe on the end there. Once you pull out about three or four of those screws, the whole assembly will slide out easily. The lamp that goes in e earlier goes in here. And isn't that bad to install? It just slides in there. The DLP, or sorry, not DLP, DLD fan is this thing over here. And the way you can tell if this is busted or not, if your TV displays error code number 37 saying that this fan is dead, you can do a quick test of this. The symptom of 37 is it'll blink green, 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 green as the light warms up and the TV powers up. Then it'll sh briefly display information on the screen for about a second, and then everything crashes and it goes into blinking red, which eventually can be coaxed into the code 37. The way you can find out if the fan is right working or not, you can pop the back cover, try this. The fan should power on on its own. If it fails to power on, you can briefly bootstrap the thing into working order. You can take a drill with no bit in it and just press it against this and spin it up manually. The yellow wire there is the one that tells it whether or not the, the lamp, excuse me, the fan is spinning. And I was able to trick the television into running long enough to verify, yes, code 37 really does mean this is the faulty fan. Now, a fan of this nature for this fan or this television is something in the neighborhood of $30 or more if you buy it from the dealer. However, fortunately, there's nothing particularly special about this. The original fan, let's see, 12 volts, uh, standard black and red, so black is negative, red is positive, yellow I believe is the monitor line, and it has a connector that looks something like this. Now, the fun thing about this, we were able to get a replacement fan for about eh, eight, 10 bucks. It was a generic computer fan. It's 60 by 60 millimeters. Thickness doesn't really matter because they're screwing it in from the inside. To replace this, after you've assembled or disassembled it so this piece here is on the ground where you can reach it, 
remove the screws from the housing here, here, there, there, and a handful of other spaces, as well as these two screws here. That will enable you to take this whole cover off the circuit board, disconnect a little wire, and then this is drill screwed in with two screws from the other side. Unscrew those, put in the new one, screw them back in, reassemble it, and you should be in business. All right, so we've got everything reassembled here. The fan is all put back together. The bulb is screwed back in. So we're gonna try and turn this thing on and see if we get success. All right, we have success. Nothing plugged into it right now, but that's not bad. Uh, total cost on this, considering the television came out of a dumpster, was, let me see, I believe $22 for the bulb and $10 for the fan. So, yeah, about $32 for a 64-inch TV. It's certainly not the newest, flattest model, but... Considering how lightweight it is, I'll take it. Hopefully this saves a few TVs to go from going to the dump. And if there's anybody out there that sees one of these on the street corner, know that the repairs are not as bad as they appear to be. This one was scavenged on a rainy night and was probably out in the rain for six to eight hours and still came back. So, best luck to everyone, and I hope this saves some TVs and saves everyone some time, trouble, and money.